in this module we'll study about vibrations what is vibration vibration is defined as the motion of a particle or a body by which it is moved from its stable position any motion which repeats itself after an interval of time is called vibration vibration is the backward and forward movement of a body rather in short you can say it is to and fro motion of a body about the mean position in our observation around us we come across innumerable examples of vibratory motion most observable ones are those producing sound the passage of fly butterfly raindrops on a roof etc as they are detected by our ear the vibration of a car bus truck bonnet due to running engines can be felt by touching them in case you have heard the vibrations of a string attached to a musical instrument the sound from them on plucking is different from one another however the same string produces the same sound in case it is sounded after an interval of time tunic forks of different sizes and prong thickness sound different we can recognize our friends by their speech even when we are not directly facing them this is due to the fact that every system has a distinct natural frequency of vibration every body has its own natural frequency when a body capable of vibration or oscillation is displaced from its mean position and then left free it begins to vibrate so whenever a body is displaced from its mean position then it will vibrate with a definite frequency now this frequency with which the body vibrates depends upon the intrinsic properties of the body such as size elasticity mass that means every body will have a frequency with which it can vibrate which depends upon the size elasticity and mass of the body this is called the natural frequency of the body when a body vibrates with its natural frequency then the vibrations executed by the body are called free vibrations so when a body is vibrating with its natural frequency then the vibrations are called free vibrations now let's see what are the examples of free vibrations uh first is an oscillating pendulum when a bob suspended by a thread is displaced from its equilibrium position and then left free here you can see a pendulum there is a bob which is suspended by means of a thread from a stand now when i was saying when a bob suspended by a thread is displaced from its equilibrium position and then left free it oscillates with its natural frequency and the natural frequency will depend upon the length of the thread so the pendulum is going to vibrate with its own frequency the frequency is depending upon the length so here you can observe the oscillations of a pendulum and you will observe that the pendulum is vibrating about its mean position 
and its displacement on both the sides is the same. Vibrations of stringed instruments. If we pluck a sitar wire or any other stringed instrument, it vibrates with its natural frequency. This frequency of the wire will depend upon the length, density and tension of the wire. The vibrations of the string are free vibrations. And this is a relationship which will tell you how to find the frequency. The frequency of the string instrument or the frequency of the wire will be equal to 1 upon 2L under root T by M where L is the length of the wire, T is the tension in the wire and M is the density of the wire. So each wire will be able to vibrate with its own natural frequency and when it vibrates with its natural frequency, we call those vibrations as free vibrations. Vibrations of a tunic fork. I hope you all have seen a tunic fork. So this is a tunic fork. It has got a stem and prongs and the frequency with which it can vibrate is always written on the tunic fork. When the prongs of tunic fork are struck on a hard rubber pad, the prongs of tunic fork start vibrating to and fro about their respective equilibrium positions. The vibrational frequency depends on the material of tunic fork and the dimensions of the prongs. So this is how the tunic fork will start vibrating and I told you that each tunic fork has the frequency mentioned that of course depends upon the material of the tunic fork and dimensions of the prongs and then when the tunic fork vibrates, it vibrates with its frequency which so these vibrations are known as free vibrations or you can say the tunic fork executes free vibrations. Vibrations in a flute. So this is a flute. You know there are holes, into, holes in it and the air is blown to produce sound. When the air column in a fluid is set vibrating by gently blowing it, the air column vibrates with its own natural frequency which depends on the length of air column. Actually, frequency of vibration is inversely proportional to the length of air column. In a fluid, you can see the holes and you can see the length of the air column. The black dots are indicating the holes closed. So, you can see what the length of air column will become. Number of holes are provided so as to change the length of air column. So, these holes when you close at different places, they change the length of air column and therefore change the frequency of sound produced. Oscillations of a loaded string. So, this is a spring with a mass suspended on it. When you pull the mass, then it will start vibrating with its own natural frequency and execute free vibrations. When a load is suspended from the free end of a suspended spring and is pulled down and released, the loaded spring executes oscillations up and down which you can observe over here with its own natural frequency which depends on the mass of load that is suspended, the nature of the spring. So these vibrations executed by the loaded spring are free vibrations. 
theoretically the energy of the body executing free vibrations remain constant and the body is expected to go on oscillating with constant amplitude infinitely as shown in this graph so the free vibrations of a body can depict it graphically in this manner this is a displacement time graph and you can see the amplitude of the vibrations are not changing that is they are constant so when a body executes free vibrations the amplitude of vibration always remains constant though the body is expected to go on oscillating with constant amplitude infinitely but the damping forces cause the amplitude to decrease continuously till the vibration stop so even though the body any body which executes free vibration is expected to keep on vibrating for a very long time but there are forces a damping forces they cause the amplitude to decrease continuously and finally the vibrations die out or will continue but these vibrations can continue if an external system compensates for the decreasing energy so that if you provide an external force to them that then they might keep on continuing vibrating in all the examples stated all the examples that we have given for free vibrations some damping forces present due to which the energy given to the body in setting it on vibration is dissipated continuously hence the amplitude of vibration decreases with time and ultimately the vibrations or oscillations come to a stop for example during oscillations of the bob of a simple pendulum the friction of the pivot and the damping force due to friction of air remain present due to which the amplitude of the oscillations of the bob goes on decreasing slowly and ultimately the bob stops so even though when we talk of any body which is executing free vibrations there is always some kind of friction which hampers the movement or the oscillations of the uh, body which is vibrating and the amplitude of the vibrations they continuously decrease and ultimately the vibrations stop due to frictional forces in reality free vibrations are impossible in life why do we write this because friction cannot be eliminated for example during oscillations of the bob of a simple pendulum the friction of the pivot and the damping force due to the friction of air remain present due to which the amplitude of the oscillations of the bob goes on decreasing slowly and ultimately the bob stops i'm sure you must have observed this in the lab whenever you set the pendulum into vibration or let's say a swing you all are familiar with the swing in the park if you um push the swing it starts moving but ultimately the oscillations die out if you don't apply some external force continuously in reality free vibrations are impossible in life because friction is always there and due to friction the amplitude of the vibrations will continuously decrease and finally the vibrations will come to stop when the energy of a vibrating system is gradually dissipated by friction and other resistances the vibrations are said to be damped 
the vibrations gradually reduce or change in frequency or intensity or cease and the system rests. So, remember that a body starts, always starts vibrating with its natural frequency but that maintenance of natural frequency vibrations is possible only when there are no damping forces or no frictional forces. This is possible only in vacuum. But in reality, the vibrations of the body continuously decrease, the amplitude continuously decreases and then the motion ceases. Then those vibrations are damped vibrations. So when you talk of a pendulum or a tuning fork or a spring loaded with the mass, they all are examples of free vibrations but in vacuum. And when you talk about their vibrations in air, then they are examples of damped vibrations. The periodic vibrations of a body of decreasing amplitude in presence of a resistive force are called damped vibrations. So, when you have periodic vibrations of a decreasing amplitude in presence of resistive force, that means when there are frictional forces, then they are called, called damped vibrations. So, all the vibrations of a body which occur in air are always damped. Free vibrations will be possible in vacuum. Now, over here, you can see a bob attached to a spring and it is continuously moving to and fro. And you can see a graph shown where the amplitude is not decreasing at all. So, this is an example of free vibrations. Now, over here, you can see a bar suspended by means of string and its to and fro motion, the amplitude is continuously decreasing. So, when we represent this graphically, you will find that the amplitude of vibration is shown in the graph to be decreasing gradually. We can represent the damping graphically showing the decrease in amplitude with the passage of time. So, this is a graph in which you can see the amplitude is continuously decreasing with passage of time and then it finally the motion stop. So children, the periodic vibrations of a body of constant amplitude in the absence of external force are called free vibrations. Amplitude and frequency of a freely vibrating body remain constant. They do not lose or gain in any energy in the process. Free vibrations, remember, can occur only in vacuum because there will not be any frictional force over there. The periodic vibrations of a body of decreasing amplitude in presence of a resi resistive force are called damped vibrations. All vibrations on earth's surface in the absence of an external force are damped vibrations. Usually in damped vibrations, frictional force is proportional to the velocity of the vibrating object and has tendency 